How's it going? Will Thompson, uh, head janitor at Better Days Miami. Sometimes they let me bartend. Sometimes. Uh, uh, we're about to have some fun stuff going on today with Mackenzie James. Uh, but before that, man, I kind of want to get into uh, the background, the history, the love behind you No know, Bourbon and maybe dispel some myths that you might have heard. Uh, one of Bourbon's many origin tales takes us back to 1789 where a Baptist minister by the name of Elijah Craig had a brilliant idea of aging his corn moonshine in a charred barrel. While Reverend Craig was certainly not like the only pioneer of bourbon, he's often credited with anyway, and there's just something so you know juicy and fun and spicy if you think about a Baptist reverend being the grandfather of the quintessential American spirit. Wouldn't you agree? These days, bourbon is defined by the following characteristics has to be made of at least 51% corn. The remaining can be split between any grain, uh, be it wheat or rye, barley, which help define the flavors of the resulting spirit. It has to be aged in New American oak barrel for at least two years with no additives, uh, with at least some kind of charred wood present. Uh, made inside the US. Um, and you'll also see the straight term, sorry, the term straight bourbon whiskey, which means that nothing was added to the spirit before it was bottled, but bourbon as a category can have things like uh, sugar and caramel color added to change the flavor and appearance. There's even a version called White Dog, which is unaged bourbon, and some people like it better as it appeals to the old moonshine roots. Uh, for a while, most bourbon production was located in Kentucky, which created the association that much like champagne or cognac, bourbon was a product of Kentucky. While that's technically no longer the case, Kentucky and surrounding areas still make most of the bourbon anyway. Now that we wrapped up all those fun historical facts and dispelled a couple of myths, let's get into the real fun stuff. I'm gonna go over a couple of home recipes that you can go ahead and use also. And now we're gonna go ahead and go over some of the uh, tools that we're gonna use to make our drink today. Uh, first and foremost, we're gonna need a mixing glass, right? Our mixing glass doesn't have to be this fancy at all. You can go ahead and use a pint glass at home. And just remember any of these tools you can find at either your local grocery store or your local liquor store. Here we have a bar spoon for stirring, right? You can use another solid long uh, spoon uh, you can use something rigid, a metal straw, whatnot. It doesn't have to be this craziness that I like to use. Now for measuring, so we have a jigger right over here. We have an ounce measurement. Over here we have two ounce measurements. If you take a look inside, small little learnings will go ahead and show you uh, one and a half and half and 0.75 on the ounces. Again, another way to uh, go around this, go to your local grocery store, Small cups, ounces, you'll find them anywhere. Our julep strainer. So this bad boy holds the ice back so you can go ahead and pour your drink over the fresh ice. So right here we have our citrus peeler. I enjoy citrus peeler, white peeler over anything. Uh, for me it's safer. And we'll go over it when I go over the, uh, the garnishing section. Hawthorne strainer, just in case you can't find uh, one of the julep strainers, you can go ahead and uh, use a Hawthorne strainer. A Hawthorne strainer is great because it goes over everything really easy, keeps everything back, helps you uh, keep everything. Uh, Hawthorne strainer helps you keep all the unwanted ice back and allows you to keep control of the flow of whatever it is that you're pouring out. So now we can go ahead and get into the ingredients that we're going to use for the drink itself. Yeah. We have aromatic bitters, right? The aromatic bitters, um, they do a multitude of things to it. In my opinion, it binds the alcohol, it binds the sugar, and uh, it helps complete the drink. Uh, there are different styles of bitters. I enjoy using, I said aromatic, there's orange bitters, there's chocolate bitters. You can switch up these styles in any way, but for today, we're gonna to keep it classic. Uh, 
for this drink, simple syrup. So this is what's gonna add a bit of that sweetness uh, to it. Everything, uh, when coming, like when you're making a cocktail, in my most honest opinion, is balance, right? So whatever sweet you have, you need a sour. Whatever sour you have, you need a sweet. Whatever strong you have, you need a weak. So this right here is what's gonna help us balance out um, uh, the bitter elements that you're gonna have in that drink. Simple syrup is really easy to make. One-to-one -one proportions of granulated sugar, water, put that bad boy in a boil. Once everything is gone, you have a nice, quick, simple syrup. And then of course, you need the sorry show, our bad boy, Louis Luck. Now, when I said before balance, balance is a big, big, big deal. Um, I mean, I may like it a little whiskey heavier. I like may like a little spicier. I may like that big oomph, right? But to start off, let's go ahead and make sure that we have our proportions right. And then after that, you can play with uh, these recipes, however it is that you want or whatever it is that fits best for you, right? So we're gonna go ahead and splash two dashes bitters. Right in our mixing glass. Now for me, it's a lot easier to make things sweeter than it is to make them unsweet. Right, so I like to start off with a quarter of an ounce, max, of simple syrup when you're making your old fashions. Here, the bad boy of the show, Louis Luck. We'll grab our jigger or whatever it is that you have to measure. Add two ounces. All right, so we have our bitters, our simple syrup, and our Louis Luck. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about ice. Ice is very important. It um, not only opens up uh, the cocktail, it too much, uh, too much ice, water down the drink. Uh, specific style of ices might make a difference. Uh, so for example, right now, we're about to use an ice that has a ton of surface area in it. Which means we only wanna stir for a short amount of time. Right? So there's no magic number as to how many stirs or whatnot. We want to go ahead, get it nice and cold, feel the glass, feel the glass. And once we see that it's diluted enough, we want to go ahead and place it over fresh ice. We like to use one nice big cube, which allows it to dilute at a steadier rate. Use our julep strainer, and once again, if you don't have a julep strainer, you can always use our Hawthorne strainer, which is so much easier. For the old fashioned, right into here, right? And because of the style of ice, once again, as I do faster, bigger portions, like this big cube that you have in here, we're allowed to dilute less, which means you would have to stir more. So once you feel that it's nice and cold, that's when you move it over. You're gonna grab orange, beautiful orange here, a white peeler. And what we're gonna do is just spray a little bit of this beautiful, you can see it, orange oil on top. It's great on the nose and it helps complete the cocktail. And there you go. Really easy. You have your Louis Luck Old Fashioned. Cheers. Man, that's good. And for our next drink, uh, one of my favorite classics, uh, which my mentor had me make over and over and over and over until I got it right, the Manhattan. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and go over the ingredients for the Manhattan. Uh, Manhattan's a beautiful, delicate, classic cocktail. 
one of the uh, reasons I love these style of cocktails is because it allows you to taste the juice. It's not about all the frills and fun and craziness that's in there. It's a little balance of this, a little balance of that, so you can enjoy the, the soul of the spirit. So we're gonna go ahead and add an ounce of sweet vermouth. Sweet vermouth is what's kind of gonna replace your sugar in this one, right? Sweet vermouth is fortified wine. Go ahead and get this bad boy in. One ounce. And it's really, really crazy how simple most of these timeless classics are. A few dashes of Angostura bitters. Again, using the angle to uh, bind these bad boys together. And of course, our Lose Luck. Two ounces. So now one thing you want to make sure is that you dilute it enough. Again, if you have crazy small bits and chunks of ice, it's gonna melt faster, right? As soon as you throw it in the alcohol, uh, bigger pieces are gonna melt slower, so you have to discern what is the style of, uh, depending on the style of ice that you have. I'm gonna go ahead and add our ice to it. And again, just like with the old fashioned, feel the glass. Watch it dilute. We're gonna grab our julep strainer or hawthorn and we're gonna place it in a coupe or martini glass. I prefer to add just a bit of orange zest to this bad boy. Again, you want to make sure you get a nice area of pith. That's where you're going to go ahead and squeeze from. You should see all the nice oils and go over your Manhattan and salute. I'm drinking this one all myself too.